and welcome back to Educator.com in this series on AP Computer Science. Today's lesson is on the standard classes and interfaces that you'll need to know for the AP Computer Science exam. There are really relatively few classes and interfaces that you will need to know for the AP Computer Science exam. These are the classes that are considered within the AP Java subset. And we'll go through each of these in detail in today's lesson. But each of these has been covered in a previous lesson in this series on Educator.com. So if, as you're going through this today, if any of these are not familiar to you, then feel free to go back to the previous lesson in the series in which the particular class that you're interested in learning more about was covered. And feel free to go back and watch that lesson again and pick up some additional information that you may have missed the first time. So here are the classes and the one interface that you need to know for the AP exam. First of all is the object class, the integer and double numeric wrapper classes, the string class, the math class, then we come to the list interface, and the implementation of the list interface in the array list class. And then finally I'll conclude with some test taking tips specifically related to these classes and interface and how to be successful in applying these on the AP exam. So let's get started. First class that we're going to talk about is the object class and the full path to this is java.language.object. The two methods that you need to be aware of for the object class are the equals method and the two string method. Equals is the method that returns a boolean that indicates whether this object is equal to another object. And to string is the method that is called when you want to produce string output from any type of object. So what else do you need to know about the object class? First of all, fundamentally, object is the highest level superclass in the standard Java class hierarchy. Every other class in the standard Java library ultimately inherits from the object class. And subclasses of object, which are every other class that's provided by Java, usually override, which means they provide their own implementation of, these two methods, the equals method and the two string method. These methods are provided in the object class primarily to have something in place that can be overridden in later subclasses. The next class that you need to be comfortable using is the integer class. This is java.language.integer. And you need to be able to use the constructor. Remember, constructor has the same name as the class that it belongs to. And the constructor for an integer takes an int and creates an object of type integer that is numerically equal to the int that you pass into the constructor. And then the method that you need to be aware of for the integer class is the int value, which takes an object of type integer and gets you an int, the primitive type int, out of the integer object. So the constructor takes primitive type int and constructs an integer object the int value takes an integer object and gets you back a primitive type of int. Those are the two things that you need to be able to do with the integer class. Additionally, you'll be expected to realize that there are these two constants, integer.min underscore value and integer.max underscore value. And these two values store, respectively, the smallest number that can be stored in the primitive type int and the largest value that can be stored in the primitive type int. And you can use these constants for comparison to make sure that you're not going to overflow the capacity 
of the primitive type int, if you have a variable of type int. What else you need to know about the integer class? Integer is the numeric wrapper class for the primitive type int. You're expected to understand what the term numeric wrapper class means. It means that it provides an object that functions like the primitive type int, but it has the behavior and characteristics of an object. So it, it can be used when you want to store integers in a data structure that requires objects like a list. That's typically when you're going to use the object integer from the class integer and not simply the primitive type int. For simple calculations or variables, it's much more convenient to use the primitive type int. But if you're going to be storing it in a list or some other structure that requires an object, then you cannot use the primitive type int, and that's the primary application that the integer class is provided to address.